go ahead and read this. Bear with me, guys. This is going to be a long read. Okay? So bear with me. Now I messed up and put my whole thing up there. Always got to be watching the studio. Shout out to the three people. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so this is from um, this is from Reddit. Y'all know how I'm always reading these things. And I, I got so into this, I was actually reading this by myself that I thought that I might go ahead and share this with you guys. And it kind of brings up a good point of why men need to walk away sometimes. And now this is, I believe this is between a man a man talking to a woman based off the messages I'm reading. But either way, however you want to read it, we you can swap the genders how you want. But nonetheless, this is how it feels like to be with somebody who needs help. And this is when I feel like it's time to walk away. Okay. I'm going to try to read this with the mic right in my face. I love you a lot and want you to be a source of meaningful support. Some love, in the, and I'll try to change voices so you understand that I'm reading differently. So let's start from the top again. I love you a lot and want you to be a source of meaningful support. Well, some love and affection would be nice. I was literally just about to call you. I've been watching a show with my dad and blank. Until I until a few minutes ago. Also, you didn't respond to any of my texts. Don't really feel too good about everything. Feels like I don't know what's going on. Not trying to ruin the night or be the big bad wolf. Just saying like, I don't know why I feel so out of place. I have been very clear with you about what's going on. I'm hanging out with my family and I and so I haven't been on my phone very much. I texted you earlier and you didn't respond. You feel you feel out of place because you're feeling anxious, not because there's something nefarious is going on with me. What I told you eight hours ago is still true, which is that we're good. About us? Not. OK, dude, not fighting with you. There's something bad. There is something bad going on with us. Drop it. Not trying to fight with you. There is something bad going on with us. So drop it. Okay. Yeah, so easy to drop something that matters to me. You literally just told me to drop it. What the F? Because it seems like you're it seems like you're over there getting mad. I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. Can't we discuss things? I mean, let me go over here. Make sure I didn't miss that. I mean, it's kind of irritating that I do everything in my power to communicate to you what is happening and to provide you with ongoing affirmation in the moments, in the moments that I can, and still you don't believe me. This is why I sent you what I did earlier about you misjudging situations where there's nothing going on. Why are you upset? You're the one who's upset. I'm literally fine. I think you're just not understanding. Yeah. What am I not understanding? If you think I'm upset, you're misunderstanding. You clearly feel anxious and doubtful. That means upset. Uh, you said, wow, it's so easy to drop things that are something important to me. I don't know what that is. If you're not feeling hurt. You do literally try your best to misunderstand me. What? What am I misunderstanding? Tell me what you're feeling. Okay, so that was one example of a message that they were going through. Okay, we're going to go ahead and read these ones. You can read ahead if you want. Um, because, you know, I'm going to try to read these verbatim, but some of the times grammatically doesn't make sense. But I just want to talk about that right quick. <clears throat> when you're going through something like this and you're talking to an individual, this is the kind of stuff that can happen with somebody who doesn't understand their emotions or anything. So you, this person's trying to explain that everything's okay with them, but the person on the other side believes, well, everything's not fine. Everything's not good. Why don't you want to talk? Why can't we have a discussion? Do you don't care about anything that's important to me? And this, you can already tell that this person's been through it enough because they start sending long messages saying, we've been through this before. Why do I have to keep explaining myself to you? And you can tell that this person is frustrated, always having to deal with this because people who have something going on, this could be a mental illness in this, in this case it is, but the people who have this mental illness going on, they can't seem to understand 
when something's going well and when something's not going well. So they're always making scenarios and making this stuff up in their head or pushing things to places they were not supposed to be at all. And when you're dating someone like this or especially married to someone like this, it is frustrating because you never know which way is up with these individuals. And I would highly suggest me personally, if you are with an individual who's struggling with such a mental illness where it's a big, it's a back and forth, I think the best thing to do is if there is no therapy involved is to just once again, walk away because there's no winning here for either of you let's continue this is a different conversation in our different day just playing the game baby what's wrong why haven't you responded at all because i want to die and i'm working on not dying no i don't want to talk about it no you can't help me i'll be fine in a few days that's why i'm in an unstable ass mood and i just want to be alone Love you. I used I used too much energy or some shit this weekend. I'm fine. You need help, blank. Fine. I can't help you, but you need help. To be honest, I'm kind of irritated. It's totally unfair for you to be sending me alarming ass text messages that then calling me acting like nothing is wrong and not taking any steps to actually address the issue. I'm not playing when I say that you need professional help. Playing the game and drinking until you can replace it with weed will never. Sorry, let me find my place. Playing the game and drinking until you until you can replace that with weed will never. And I repeat, never make this cycle of mood swings go away. In fact, I think I know it will only make things worse in the long run. You desperately need to address the root cause of these issues, which is a combination of emotional, chemical deregulation and unresolved emotional trauma. At this point, I'm begging you. I love you and know for a fact because I've lived it that your life can be that your life can be good and interesting and full without periodic bouts of extreme sadness or anger. I'm feeling exhausted and finally starting to fall back asleep. But again, I'm on my hands and knees here, please. So here, once again, we're seeing where an individual is saying, this person has been through this. We need to allow these people to get help, but we also need to allow ourselves to be able to walk away from this and rid our hands of it. See, when you fall in love with the person, the problem is, is you fall in love with what you believe they can be. And when you fall in love with somebody, fall in love with what you believe a person can be, it will always be a fantasy in your head. It will always be a lie. And it will only drive you to insanity. It really will. And now all you have at the end of the day is two people feeling crazy. Okay, one actually is dealing with mental illness and you will feel like you're insane trying to deal with this. There's a lot of prayer and a lot of things we can try to do. But at the end of the day, there needs to be a deadline and you need to go through with that deadline and be like, if things don't change at this point, I've got to walk away from my health and for my family because this is not going anywhere. All right, we're going to go on to another message. <clears throat> do something did you see sometimes the grammatically is not going to make sense. So just bear with me. Did you do something on IG where I can't see your post? I'm about to rest for a bit feeling kind of sick again and definitely not baby. I never see your stories. I don't have a friends only list on your post. I don't post a ton of stories, baby. I'm not sure why the algorithm isn't showing you my stuff, but I'm definitely not hiding it from you. I have to place them direct. I have to go directly to your page to see them. Once again, that's just giving examples. Please let me rest a little. I promise I'll send you pics. I love you. I have to eat dinner now, but we'll send you more later. <laughs> LOL. So much for that. You haven't even texted me. My mother says she do shit, ain't do it. My sister says she do shit, ain't do it. You say you do some shit, ain't do it. Why the fuck the women I love most in my life won't do won't do for me like I do for them. It's giving, don't give a damn. Another example. Why did you hang? Okay, so this is the part of the message. I hear you on that too, Frederick. 
So this is where it's going to get a little wild. Okay. This is the part of the message that it's going to seem silly, but please bear with me. This is the longest part of the messages. Um, and it, and it, and it seems like, um, a, a silly argument. Um, but the more I read into it and the more I read it, it seems like both of them are, they start to get off page. And this is why I'm saying at this point, there's nothing that can be communicated. So sit back, relax. Here we go. <clears throat> Let me get some water real quick. Why did you hang up? Giving me every excuse to go anyway. Babe, what? I didn't go away. I took a laxative last night and my stomach is killing me. You're the one who hung up. You're being, the, you're the one, you're the, you're the one that be making stuff up to go and be selfish. I didn't feel wanted. I left. So what am I supposed to do when my stomach is actually upset? You did the same thing yesterday. I don't know. Yeah. And yesterday I threw up. The issue was that I didn't call you back. Never used it as an excuse in the first place. So what should I should have held my vomit? Whatever, dude. I don't trust it and I shouldn't and I don't have to. You're the one that was being selfish. Yeah. Okay, so you see I switched voices here. My bad. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't call you back and not because I vomited. Making up any reason to leave. So now I can't have privacy to take a shit because you don't want me to get off the phone. Make it make sense, X. Anything but accepting accountability. I did accept accountability. Yesterday, we were having an important discussion. I said I'd call you back, and I didn't. And I didn't. You also used, used being sick sick as an excuse to fucking leave. This morning, we were sitting on the phone. I started to get terrible gas cramps, and you didn't let me hang up. So I left you on the phone while I tried to poop. You, cho you, chose, to, you chose to hang up. So don't play coy with me. Yeah, I, except I was actually sick. The issue wasn't that I left in the first place. The issue was that I didn't call you back. I hung up on you because you made me feel terrible. No, my excuse is my issue is the excuse. So I just want to take a break right quick. So the problem is, is he is saying based off these messages, I'm assuming these are two guys, but this could be two women. I don't know. But nonetheless, he's saying that the issue is that you made an excuse to hang up on me. But the under the other individual here is, is saying that what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just leave you on the phone? What's the problem? Uh, you're you're mad because I didn't call you back. And the other person saying it's not that you didn't call me back. It's the fact that you made an excuse to hang up. So one person's arguing about not calling back. The other person is arguing about you hung up. That's my problem. And that's where this message gets um, silly. But at the same time, I'll help you understand. I didn't feel like you, I didn't feel I didn't make you feel any type of way. I told you my stomach was upset. I told you my stomach was upset and you told me not to hang up. So I did. What am I supposed to do? And that you didn't call me back. OK, so I'm not allowed to hang up ever. We have to be on the phone at all times. You didn't make me feel any type of way. So before we get to you again, now it has switched over to. They're still upset. So the person hung up. The person who is upset about them not calling back is the same person who hung up. Now, the reason they're also upset is because the person who left the phone decided that they had to go to the restroom because they were feeling sick and they didn't call back. So they're having an issue with them not staying on the phone the entire time, which is weird, but bear with me. And that didn't call me back. Because you know my feelings better. You're being dismissive as F. Go to hell. What am I supposed to do? I'm in hell right now, praying to God to let this shit out. I'm being serious. What am I supposed to do if my stomach is upset? Just stay on the phone? Is me having my work call an excuse? Fuck off. You're being dismissive. And if I did that shit, it'd be a problem. Just tell me how you felt, blah. You're full of shit. Uh... Just like yesterday in Al, it isn't a problem. You have to poop and go all the time. How the fuck are you going to tell me the fuck you made me feel? Seriously, what is the alternative? Then you try and justify the little stupid ass shit you do like yesterday. What was I supposed to do? Keep you on the phone while I vomited it? Dying on a dumb ass hill. 
I made a promise to call you back, which I didn't do. That's the issue. I'm not going to ignore my bodily functions. I'm entitled to privacy. You're dismissive and you're selfish. And you're mean. You show me who you are all the time and I don't believe it. I believe you now. Now you're weaponizing what I told you yesterday. So there's a part in here that says um, the person wrote that sometimes worry. So (laughs) it's it's hard to make sense. So this individual just said that you show me who you are at a time and now I believe you. The other person had told them sometimes I feel like I'm a bad person. And so now it seems like the uh, boyfriend here is weaponizing the fact that she feels like she's bad. Sometimes she feels like a terrible person sometimes. And so that's where, that's why she says, now you're just weaponizing it. Hope that makes sense. <clears throat> Let's go back a little bit. You show me who you are all the time and I just don't believe it. I believe you now. Now you're just weaponizing what I told you yesterday. I didn't make you feel any type of way. I told you my stomach was upset. You told me not to hang up. So I didn't. What am I supposed to do? Right? I'm asking seriously, what am I supposed to do if I need to take a shit? I'm weaponizing. You told me you didn't make me feel a way. You're dismissive. You're selfish. You're mean. You show me who you are all the time. That's what you said. After you just dismiss how I felt. After you told me to tell you how stuff made me feel. What am I supposed to do if I have to take a shit? You still haven't answered my question. Because you're dismissive. Fuck your question. I don't want to. Ha- I don't. Want you to feel rejected. I kept you on the phone because I didn't want to upset you. I understand trust is fragile because of yesterday. I shouldn't have said I didn't make you feel any type of way. That was dismissive and mean and gaslighting. I really need you to help me understand what I'm supposed to do when I need to take a shit. Fuck off, dude. Don't speak to me that way. Then leave me alone. You're mean. Okay. No, I'm not. I'm going to be mean. Right? Very mature. Because you just proved you weren't. Me having to take a shit isn't mean? Why the fuck why the fuck I gotta be mature when you weren't? I wasn't immature. You weren't? Yeah, I went to take a shit. So being dismissive is mature to you. I shouldn't have said I didn't make you feel any type of way. You still haven't answered my question. No shit, Sherlock Holmes. What am I supposed to do? If you're going to weaponize my fears against me, this isn't going to work. I shared that with I shared that with you in confidence. If you're going to dismiss how I feel, this isn't going to (laughs) work. This is a crazy conversation going on here. Fighting between. It really came down to she leaving him on. him leaving him on. Leaving him on the phone and he hung up. It's just crazy that. And once again, I'm, I'm assuming this is a man and woman, but this could be two women. It almost sounds like two women speaking to each other, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. My point is the relationship, but. It seems like this person can't get over the fact that she keeps bringing up that she had to take a shit. I know that sounds silly, but this is where it is. She can't get over the fact that she had to take a shit. And this person feels like because that person keeps bringing it up, it feels like they're being dismissive. What could have resolved all of this is if the individual had just said, look, I didn't mean to make you feel bad. My bad. Maybe that could have killed it. But because she kept going back to you, you, what am I supposed to do? I have to take a shit. What am I supposed to do if I have to take a shit? What am I supposed to do if I have to take a shit? And this person has already made it clear that, hey, look, I'm not answering that fucking question because I feel like it's demissive. The miscommunication is what's happening right here. But my point still stands that if you're having conversations like this and a person, one, does weaponize something against you and two, feels like no matter what you say or do is dismissive. What the hell can you do, man? In, fir- in the first time you get annoyed, you immediately start lobbing insults at me and that that you know is going to bring me to this dark place. So I guess it's it's not finna work. All because I had to take a shit and you hung up. Okay. Nah, I didn't throw I didn't start throwing any insults. I told you what you did made me feel. I told you I told you on how what you did made me feel. And then you started being dismissive for literally no reason as if fuck my feelings all over again. No, because you were just being dismissive for no reason. I'm not going to hold a shit because you want to. You don't want me to get off the phone. And this is how it all ends, gentlemen. <clears throat> Whew. 
So this message is pretty much just an apology. I don't really need to read all of this because it's not really that important to the story. But this person ends up saying, hey, I'm sorry. I want us to have a relationship. I wish it would be healthier. And uh, I'm trying to do my best. But see, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Okay. Matter of fact, I'll read it for you right quick. But uh, you can just put me on two times speed. Hey, I wanted to address last night because I remember you hanging up on me after I expressed frustration and you asking me if we were good since we didn't talk that much yesterday. Part of what I meant by needing you to have a little faith in the relationship was understanding that we're good, even if we don't talk as much for a day or two. Having a healthy relationship means that we don't need to be in constant contact to feel to be connected. Sometimes people have busy days or even busy weeks, but that isn't grounds for us to have to start questioning the relationship. Having constantly to reassure you that everything is fine leaves me feeling tired at best, drained and resentful at the worst. I understand that that not having me physically close makes it harder for you for you to feel like the relationship is uh, secure or feel feel secure in the relationship. I've tried to be better about sending pictures and reassuring you and loving you in the ways that you need. And I think I've done a pretty good job over the past few days. Some of the insecurity you feel I can help with by showing you love, but I think a large part is an anxious attachment style, which is un ultimately something that only you can learn to manage. Constantly worrying about us being on the same page. <clears throat> Constantly worrying about us being on the same page and needing to feel connected all the time verges on codependency, which isn't healthy or sustainable. I love you so much and want this to work, but the level of anxiety you feel about us growing apart and not being good, generally disturbing generally disturbing the strength of the relationship puts a strain on things, especially when that anxiety flares up. Just because we don't talk as much for a day or two, I really need you to work on being more conscious and codependent of ways of thinking. I'm guilty of it too, and try to be mindful of those urges myself. I love you so much and want you to be supportive and validating of your feelings, but sometimes the level of anxiety you feel is irrational, and I can't make it go away, no matter how hard I try. Again, I love you so much, and I'm only saying... This all because I care and want this to work. And that's the problem. And that's the problem. That's pretty much it. You let me know what you think.